GM 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 welcome to web3 club in today's video what we're going to discuss is how do we add royalties to our smart contract our nft smart contracts this was requested by a lot of people in my discord channel so i'm just honoring their wish if you would also like to tell me what i should make videos on next please leave a comment or join my discord channel and just like every video please make sure to hit that like button subscribe to my channel it really keeps me motivated seeing all the love that i'm receiving and i'm really really grateful for that now with all the formalities out of our way let's get started so now i know a lot of people jump into nfts because you know the royalties are something which are very appealing to them it also becomes a continuous source of income for them them here being artists and collection creators but if you've seen any of my previous videos you would know that there was nothing that we did to mention what are the royalties and how do we enforce them so i'm going to explain all of those things in this video first of all royalties are not enforced by the smart contract and that's a bummer royalties are honored by marketplaces so if some marketplace decides to go rogue and doesn't honor any royalties you can't do anything but i believe artists will not promote that marketplace and it will not become very big so as to impact like more than 10% of the royalties that you would have received so first thing first royalties are not enforced by the smart contract they are honored by the marketplaces or the people selling them now in terms of standards like we have a standard for ERC721 and 1155 We also have a standard for royalty called ERC two nine eight one, but unfortunately, this was added like very recently, and that is why marketplaces, old marketplaces like OpenSea, Rarible, and all those, they don't honor the ERC two nine eight one smart contract. New marketplaces like LooksRares honors these standards, and a bunch of other new up and coming marketplaces all honor these standards. For old marketplaces like OpenSea, Rarible, you have to sort of go manually and set a value, but OpenSea also allows us to add something called contract URI, which I'll explain in this video. Using contract URI, we can let OpenSea know what are our royalties, who the royalty should go to, what is the name of the collection, and a bunch of other things. So first, let's go through the ERC two nine eight one. The ERC is sort of complete. and it's a very small erc the there are only two methods that we need to implement the one is royalty info which takes the token id and the sale price and it returns the receiver of the royalty and the royalty amount that the receiver should get and the royalty amount will always be in the token for which the nft was sold so if the nft was sold for usdc the royalty amount the royalty money that you will receive would be in usdc if it was sold for ether you will receive ether and the second method that we need to implement is the supports interface which returns true if the interface id is this 0x2a552058 this is an erc165 method which is already implemented in erc721 1155 when it lets other smart contracts know what methods we support and that's it ERC2981 just has these two methods that we need to implement and then on OpenSea we have something called contract URI and you can see that function over here this is supposed to return a contract URI which in turn will return a json object the json object contains the metadata for the collection uh, like name description the image that should be shown on the OpenSea's collection page the external link which is the website of that collection seller fee basis points this is where we let opensea know what is the percentage of the royalty that we need to take and because these are basis points you basically just multiply whatever percentage you have by 100 and that is the basis points so if you want to take 2 and a half percent your value here would be 250 because 2.5 into 100 is 250 100 value over here means the seller fee basis points the royalty fee is 1% and the last is fee recipient which lets open see know where should the royalty be paid out to so this url you can basically host on any of the json hosting websites that are available out there or what you can do is create this in the smart contract and convert it into base64 
uh, but that is something which I'm not going to touch in this video. This is probably for a future video. Open Zeppelin has implemented an ERC 2981 contract uh, and it has given us an abstract contract that we can inherit in our NFT smart contract. The problem is that this was a very recent edition. So it is not available for importing from NPM or something like that. I think it's it's, st it's still in the release candidate stage. So today I'm going to show you two different codes, one where we directly import this from GitHub and one where we implement this, implement this whole ERC2981 by hand and it's not very difficult. So let's go to our open Zeppelin wizard. I have already filled in some things over here. Uh, so I have a name token, a base URI that I'm not adding over there, but I have added a feature called mint table and I've added the enumerable module in this nft now i can open this in remix uh, you know the drill all right so now we have a simple nft smart contract that is present over here first what we're going to do is implement erc2981 by ourselves and then we will use open zeppelin's implementation i am doing this because open zeppelin has not released the erc2981 as a package so we don't really have it available in npm and we can't import directly so we have to import via github which is a little lengthy process which is a little dangerous process so if you're doing it right now uh, near the release of this video just do what i do in the first part otherwise go to the second part so the first thing that we will add in the constructor is how much royalty fees do we want from the user so we will just add you int and this time i'll add 96 and then i'll add a variable called uh, royalty fees in bips so we will enter the value in bips which is basically percentage the number percent into 100 what i am going to do is store this u in 96 uh, value in the smart contract so i'm remo removing the underscore because underscore is used for internal variables and uh, what i'm going to do is just add this royalty fee in bips is equal to underscore royalty fee in bips and the other thing that we need we should add over here is a string with memory which should be the contract uri so we will expect a contract uri while deploying uh, in the smart contract and we will store this string as a public variable and we will call it contract URI. So this way contract URI method is available directly for OpenSea to call. And we just need to uh, store this contract URI like this. Amazing. Now because I added uh, ERC721 enumerable, it gave me a supports interface method already. So now what I need to make sure is that if the interface ID is equal to this value, if the interface ID is equal to this value, uh, I need to return true. So what I'm going to do is interface ID equals that value or any of the interfaces that are present in the parent in the parent smart contracts. Uh, we need to send true for that as well. Okay, so this value is for royalty standards. Great. So now one method that we need to implement is royalty info. So I'm just going to copy this method and paste it here and now i just need to add parentheses now one thing that uh, before i implement this method i one thing that i need to add i want to add actually is the ability for the user to change who is the royalty receiver for the smart contract so what we're going to do is we're going to come here and put address royalty receiver and the royalty receiver receiver uh, in the beginning will be the message sender uh, who is the owner of this smart contract and then what we do is we'll give a method to change the royalty receiver so now that i have a royalty receiver and the royalty amount what i can do do is uh, create another function first which can calculate royalty right and it requires a u into 56 sale price and this returns this function sort of is a pure function it's a public function and it returns u into 256 
and in the return what we'll do is we'll calculate underscore sale price divided by 10,000 why 10,000 because 100 percent would be 10,000 bips all right and then we multiply by royalty fees in pips and we return the value so the values that we need to return over here is the receiver which will be uh, we need to add return uh, receiver will be royalty oops, royalty receiver and the royalty amount will be calculate royalty with the sale price uh, now we, I'm not taking into consideration the token ID here but uh, if you have want to have royalty which is different for a different token ID just be my guest add that over here add over here in the calculation and move forward now I also need to allow people to change these uh, royalty calculations so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste a method where uh, basically I'm setting the royalty info uh, by changing the address and royalty fees and letting the owner set the contract URI uh, by changing the contract URI both of these methods are only owner so the only owner can call and change these royalty information all right so now let's compile this and just like that I've received an error on the line 56 because it's not royalty address <laughs> it's royalty receiver <laughs> All right, so I go ahead and compile again and this time I'm getting a warning that token ID is not used anywhere which is fine for us and I'm getting another error which says I should turn this view into this pure into view so that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to compile again so that uh, one warning is gone at least <laughs> all right uh, and then I, I come to the deployment part and I just select my token now here what I need to do is send the royalty fees which will be let's say uh, two and a half percent 250 and the contract URI so this is the this is where I will put a URL of a server or any any place which returns the the JSON in this format and there in that JSON file you need to have a seller basis fee and all those things so let's say I just uh, go ahead and call this I call this https something colon colon something something dot com slash metadata dot json uh, but like in production you will actually use a correct json then i click on transact and i deploy the contract now you can see that there's a method called royalty info and if i pass any token id and let's say a sale price of one thousand ten thousand and i call this the royalty amount that it returns is 250 and if you check 2.5 percent 2.5 percent into 10,000 the value is 250 great so our code works <laughs> it returns the correct value uh, now it's up to the marketplaces to honor this this is not something that we can control but of course a marketplace can Another thing that you can do is on OpenSea, for example, uh, if you have anything, let's say I had created this uh, collection called Pluto the Planet. So what I can do is I can click on this edit button. Now, the only reason I'm seeing this edit button is because I am the owner of this collection. Now, when I click on this edit button, it will ask me to sign in because, you know, it will make sure that this is actually my address. And once I click on that sign, uh, I can change the values over here and over here you will see that there is a percentage fee and a payout wallet address that is provided over here. So you can see that the percentage fee I can change let's say to 5% or whatever and then press submit changes. So if you are not able to use a contract URI you can also go ahead like this and make changes to every marketplace out there so uh, if you're just looking for royalty uh, i think this is it uh, that you don't need to do anything else and just use this this small piece this these methods one two three four methods and one fifth method actually supports interface uh, and add royalties to your nft smart contracts but as i've already said that there is an open Zeppelin library out there as well do you if you want to use that you will have to sort of make some changes and what are those changes you have to copy this URL uh, so to find this 
you go to open zeppelin contracts in the contracts you go to token and there you will find common and uh, common in common if you open the erc 2981 file you will find this url so i'm going to go ahead and copy this url and now what i'm going to do is write import and then put that url now the problem is because we are using two different imports we will get an error declaration error and that is because i'm using open zeppelin from npm and github and they are not compatible for a lack of better word so what we have to do is use the github url instead of open zeppelin url so what you can do is just copy this till the contracts part uh, you can remove the contracts part from here just press command d so it will select all these delete this and then paste the value so this is what it should look like github.com open zeppelin open zeppelin contracts blob master and then contracts token and then whatever value that you want all right and now if i compile it it should compile without an error but with just a warning because the warning is there uh, so once you have this the next thing that you will do is basically add erc2981 over here and once you add that you don't need this interface id if you add erc2981 over here as well and then you can compile now once you compile there's an error because i'm i'm also having the royalty info calculations uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just put this in a comment and compile again and this time it works completely very good now if you go to erc2981 there is uh, there is a method called set default royal royalty which is which requires a, an address receiver and a fee numerator which is of uint 96 so i can just call this method to set the royalty for the users so when i'm calling this i don't need this i can remove this and just call set default royalty and put receiver and royalty fee in bips over here uh, another thing then I can do is just call set royalty info, right? I can just call set royalty info over here and uh, it requires message.sender and the royalty fee in bips. So now once I do that, uh, I don't need, I don't really need royalty receiver or royalty fee in bips. So I can just go ahead and move these variables. And with that out of the way, I can just remove my comments and this is a much smaller smart contract uh, i can compile this and i'll still see that there's an error and the error is because i forgot a semicolon but now if i go ahead and compile this there is no error no warning nothing i can do, now go ahead uh, remove the old deployed contract and deploy it again with let's say the same values and i click on transact the transaction has completed now if I go ahead and find the royalty info for let's say token ID 1 and sale price, um, I believe 10,000, I call it the value that it gives is 250, which is correct. Now, if I want to change the royalty information, uh, what I can do is just change the receiver. Uh, let's say I don't want to change the receiver. I want to keep the same receiver uh, and the royalty fees that I need to change should be now three percent and i click on transact i get a tick over here and i call it again this time the return value is 300 which is three percent of ten thousand and that is how you set royalty for this uh, another thing that you can check over here is the contract uri it should return whatever value that you set and uh, if you change this value uh, and only the owner can change it if you change this value to uh, all right <laughs> and you transact you see the tick sign uh, and again you click here the value should have changed and yeah and that concludes this video thank you so much for watching the video let me know if you have any questions if you're stuck anywhere uh, leave a comment or join my discord a lot of people helping each other out and sometimes i also try to jump in over there if you like this video please make sure to hit that like button subscribe to my channel that really keeps me motivated to bring, bring these videos every week. I know I don't do it every week, but I try my best. Uh, I already have a day job, so you know, that keeps me busy. Thank you so much again. I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.